final question, how can we open up diversity in our executive management in cybersecurity and why haven't we? Deidre, start us off. Love this conversation. This is huge. Uh, so, okay, a couple of things. One is uh, most organizations do not have roles and responsibilities clearly defined such that promotion criteria is transparent. When promotion criteria is transparent, women will be promoted instead of our friends. Uh, and women are different than uh, men and uh, men in their un can have unconscious biases and feel like, oh, this person's not ready uh, because they don't feel the same way when I interact with the men. And I've seen it and I uh, all day long, it isn't necessarily uh, conscious. So if we have measurable agreements around roles and responsibilities for promotions, this a lot of this will go away because once things are transparent, fair is fair. That being said, another thing that I've noticed, and I've, um, uh, you'll see a press release between CyberSN and Secure Diversity and SANS, uh, is that two years ago, New Year's, I was stuck somewhere I didn't want to be, and I started thinking about women not being in senior executive roles in security, and so I started looking at the, the men that were in these roles, and what are their backgrounds, and it is very clear that they have high-level certifications and trainings in the leadership arena, not just cyber, lots of investment. I'm talking $100,000, $200,000 minimum in certifications. And so uh, I've made a pledge to use the money that we raise for our events to go foster that. Now, I don't love that that's the case. I'm not an advocate of, you know, these, these certs sh shall be an entry point for anybody by any means. Uh, I, we live in a system that I, we need to minimally play in to get women promoted. Uh, and so it's those two things. Uh, and um, at the end of the day, the, the, the thing that's made the most movement is legislation. So Max, I mean, you're my hero today, uh, you know, reminding all of us that it's legislation that really makes things happen. And so let's keep making legislation for equitable treatments at work and uh, we can see you know more of this too meaning people are being fined at the board level in the c-suite if there isn't diversity if and now we're seeing people be fined for retention statistics and so these things make impact unfortunately because they're tied to money so there's this sort of you know the human part of what we need to do and then there's the like never forget that only money makes things happen uh, so much like the pain that we were talking about, and if you haven't experienced a breach, it doesn't doesn't feel the same. You may not, you may act differently. Uh, so it's a it's it's it is simple to solve. Uh, the other piece is just we need more women coming in, which we're uh, you know that focus is there. It's a numbers piece, but truly there's not unfair there's not fair promotional criteria happening. And I get the calls day in day out from women. That's why they're leaving. Somebody just got promoted over me and it really ought to have been my job based on resume and it's a constant. Charles, what do you think? Can't help but say amen to what Deidre just said because it's so true. I've seen in a lot of different organizations. I hear from some of my clients who come in and talk to me about career potential and growth within cybersecurity. I'm amazed at how many times I hear stories like this from different demographics and more importantly, as she mentioned, women. I think the other a facet of it is this lack of talent. Um, we're over, we're burning out the people that we already have. We're unable to find new talent. So there's no room for people to move up. We're taking advantage of everyone we have and we're working them in multiple, as you stated before, in multiple capacities, they're wearing multiple hats. Instead of us structuring and organizing ourselves in such a way, that there's opportunities for everyone. We become very small and tight with our organizations. And as she mentioned, it's clear that oftentimes there's just no no rhyme or reason when you go to your performance review about what's next. It's like, no, we like you where you are. You just stay there. It's like, no, I'm trying to move up as well, just like others in the organization until voila, one day you wake up and there's been a new position created for someone to move up in the organization. And that is what has to stop. It has to stop. It has to be a commitment from executive leadership that this is not how we're going to do business. We're not going to support it. We're not going to turn our eyes to it when we see it. And I think that impacts people in so many of the underserved and disadvantaged communities within cyber that it's keeping the good folks from actually even staying in the field and progressing. Amen. So <laughs> that's a good way to start. Max, let's kick it back to you. We really have to build our, our leaders, our leaders of tomorrow. And we're starting to do that by getting more women into college 
uh, and getting them more into STEM. But that's just part of it. We need to, to build the leadership of tomorrow. And we start by having the leaders of today, especially the ones that look like me, start asking that very question. Why does everybody else around me look like me? And they, if leaders need to truly embrace EQ, and if they embrace EQ and learn more about themselves, they're going to learn more about each other or others, and they're going to learn that they're much more powerful and they're much more likely to achieve success when they're dealing with a diverse uh, group of, of thought. That's awesome. And, and I actually like the, the idea of getting people into STEM, but I heard recently that they should change it to STEAM and the A should be for the arts as an additional add-on to it. And I, and I agree with that. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, and now it was my turn to preach a little bit. So we'll kick it off and end with Jax. I love it. Yeah, this one is a really, is a tough one for me because I've been the one on the receiving end where I haven't received the promotion or I haven't been able to be afforded the same opportunity as my male counterparts, both in cybersecurity and in the military. It was definitely different in the military because you have the rank and the structure, but it, it was an environment that I lived in and I came over to cybersecurity and I was really surprised that being a woman was still a thing. And it wasn't always a good thing, depending on the culture that you were in. in. And so for me, I want this to change. Um, I love what everybody has said. I think all of these things need to start being implemented, especially the measurable promotion criteria. That is huge. A lot of organizations just promote their buddies and you see it all the time. Um, I think that leadership needs to stop letting this happen. And we, and I think how that's going to happen is start getting more leaders that have higher EQs, that understand and have empathy. And I think we're moving in certain organizations in that way. But it also is going to take these women like myself to step out more, to have more of a voice, to continue to get educated, to get the necessary skills that we need to be competitive and more competitive and not saying more competitive than our male counterparts, but just more competitive in the market, if that's certification, if that's hands-on experience, if that's academia, whatever that looks like. But we need to have all of those things. We need incubations for, and I'm and I'm speaking from a woman's perspective, but this is for all underserved, so like for all individuals that are not receiving those opportunities. We need more incubation platforms to start fostering and developing the executive mindset so they can start thinking like an executive and they may be in a junior manager role. And then we need to see really basically systemic change. And I don't know how that's going to happen, but it has got to start with systemic change where things start shifting and moving. And I think it's going to happen when we start getting more women leaders in these roles and we start having more women owned companies that we're going to start seeing more women being served in these executive roles and also not being put there just because you're a woman, because that drives me crazy as well, or not because you're black or that you're gay, but because you have that talent to be in that seat. And we still haven't, a lot of the individuals, not a lot, but some of the individuals that are in those executive roles got there because they were diverse, not because they earned the role in a certain way. And I don't think that's fair either. We need to have that commonality and we need to figure that out. And um, I don't know how, when or how that's going to happen, but I know that we're moving in the right direction. It's just slowly. Any follow-up? Yeah, I, brilliant. Everybody was brilliant. I, I'll just add that our attackers are diverse. So if we're not diverse, then how could we th possibly understand how they think, feel, and perceive? We need diversity to defend ourselves. So if one doesn't want to do it because women are equal or underrepresented people are, are equal and the, in, in some reason they don't get that, well, better do it because your attackers are diverse and you can't possibly understand them if you're not diverse. Thank you all for being on the Fireside Chat hosted by CyberPro Podcast. I am humbled to have all four of you be so ultimately awesome and be on my, my podcast. So stay awesome and thank you. Thank you.